our agenda today um, shows, oh, let's talk about open action items. Then we've got a topic from Oleg on Docker images and the proposed CentOS image and multi-platform images. Uh, if Natasha makes it to the session, we'll invite her to talk about the plugin installation manager tool. I'm here. Oh, great, Natasha. Thank you. Thanks for being here and welcome. We'll look for, are you comfortable with that being on the agenda? Ready to talk about it? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Then after that, if, if Alex is here uh, to talk YAML configuration, we may optionally do that. Then Windows installer status with Alex Earl. Great to have Alex here. And then the performance test framework is final topic on our agenda today. Anything else that needs to be put on the agenda? Great. Okay, so let's do a brief review of the to-dos. I still have the open item to review the, the JEP for the Docker, to submit the Jenkins enhancement proposal for Docker operating system support. My apologies. I will do it, I'm sure. Oleg, you've got one on Windows support policy. Anything that you want to report there? No, nothing. Alex, we've got one for you with regard to code signing infrastructure with Olivier Bernin. Anything you'd like to report there? <clears throat> yeah, so I've been working with um, with him on getting an Azure agent up in the trusted infrastructure. Um, so we have kind of the init script ready, which installs the necessary like Java and um, Visual Studio build tools um, so that we can do like MS build and um, sign tool. Um, there's an issue right now um, that we're kind of working through with credentials. So, um, but once that's there, we should be able to spin up Windows agents in Trusted to do this, um, to do Windows builds as necessary. Excellent, thank you. So, so proceeding, uh, Azure infrastructure, infrastructure in progress, issues being worked with, with Olivia. Excellent, thanks very much. And excuse my clattering keyboard, I promised to buy a quieter keyboard, it'll arrive soon. All right, Oleg, Docker Images. Okay, mm, so for Docker images, uh, we have two parallel stories. So just a second, I will share my screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in VPN. Oh, I, I think I have to stop sharing, Oleg, if we want yeah. you to share. So Zoom. But I would say that it's also an advantage of Zoom because we don't mess up the video recording like we usually do in Hangouts. Right, so I think I've stopped share. I think my screen is no longer shared. Yeah, do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Okay, great. So, yeah, uh, regarding Docker images, we have uh, two threads ongoing in public, maybe even uh, three. There is also discussion about UBI. Um, so, yeah, uh, one of the things uh, which uh, we have uh, right now is uh, this pull request, which was submitted uh, by Arnaud. Uh, about uh, adding CentOS support for um, Java 8. So Java 11 is out of the scope, but uh, yeah, they'll, this pull request is ready to go, in my opinion. And basically, uh, why I did it uh, to the agenda? Because I wanted to coordinate with Alex uh, about uh, merging. Because Alex, as far as I know, has access to trust that the infra after Windows installers work. Yeah, that's correct. I have the, um, I, I can see the, core release containers uh, master branch job. Um, so I, I can monitor it as necessary. Yeah, so basically we can merge at any moment. And once we merge, uh, weekly releases should be reprovisioned. So there were some patches in this pull request all, uh, since uh, the last changes. Uh, yeah, basically at CentOS support will start from uh, the previous uh, weekly release. So once we integrate it, uh, we will get uh, one release on Trusted CI. And if something goes wrong, uh, yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready anytime this morning, or I guess whatever time it is for you, <laughs> afternoon. If you're fine, we can just click the merge button. Yeah, sure, go ahead. So if we need to change the agenda at the end of the meeting, you know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell you, there is nothing sweeter than watching live merge 
during a platform sig meeting. We should do more of this. I like this. Oh, okay. Well, you see images in Windows are different from images in uh, Mac OS, so it's not fun. Because yeah, it should be a ship and the Italy flock. Uh, no, yeah, it's not about Costa Concordia, but yeah, you already know this joke. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, I'll monitor and then uh, it, if it's uh, if there are any issues, I'll, I'll bring it up uh, if there are. Okay. Yeah, so this is a part of uh, the story. Okay, so probably we will need to do something uh, for Java 11 eventually, but yeah, for now, Java 8 uh, is enough. Um, the separate part of this story is about uh, UBI. Uh, UBI is universal base image, which is now shipped by uh, Red Hat. So yeah, CentOS is formerly shipped by Red Hat as well, or by CentOS project, but yeah, whatever. Uh, so here in the thread, uh, there was uh, Scott McCarthy who joined the discussion and uh, offered uh, um, to have um, <clears throat> uh, UBI based image because UBI based image is something which is more liked by enterprises because yeah, it's a standardized image. Yeah, when you use it, you have opt-in uh, support from Red Hat, uh, etc. So there is, was a proposal to have it. Uh, one of the things why this proposal was delayed a bit is because of expert license concerns, because uh, end user license agreement for UBI says that, uh, well, you have to comply with US expert rules. And what it means that uh, you as an organization uh, are supposed to ensure that uh, this image doesn't get, uh, to ship, get shipped to restricted countries and region like Iran, North Korea, Crimea, or whatever. And we had a problem with it because yeah, basically we have no means to ensure it on Docker Hub. And uh, what uh, was in discussion is actually, well, yeah, it's one, it was considered as a pretty serious issue to discuss. Uh, Scott, thanks a lot to him, he did extra mile in order to verify it uh, with legal. Um, and yeah, basically the summary of the discovery that uh, um, it's not worse that uh, all other images than uh, we ship because um, Ubuntu, Debian, etc. they have pretty much the same restrictions. So yeah, it's uh, all, it's uh, a concern, but yeah, it's concern which we already have. So probably it's something we need to bring up with CDF uh, as a part of transition of infrastructure. Uh, I'll probably bring it up uh, today with Tracy at the advocacy and outreach meeting. Uh, so yeah, basically what said, Red Hat isn't going to be any soon to you if you break the export compliance, it will be the US government. Yeah, it sounds really reassuring, but uh, yeah, that's what we have. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, basically I don't think that uh, this is a restriction for us. What I, well, at least it's not a big obstacle to get it. Uh, so yeah. I just asked uh, who is interested to implement it because yeah, it means that we need to implement it, which is uh, easy part. Then we need to release it, uh, deploy it, and somehow maintain it, which is uh, less easy part. Um, and yeah, if somebody steps up, uh, we can integrate it. So maybe we will have some updates uh, in the next uh, meetings. Uh, there was also a thread about using Quay. So Quay is uh, another Docker Hub like solution. Uh, for containers delivery, which supports basically Docker and Rocket. Uh, but yeah, mm, it's a uh, subject for discussion. So yeah, again, if somebody is interested to uh, support uh, delivery flow for Rocket, uh, okay, let's do so. If not, okay, then not. Would, would this be instead of publishing the Docker? Publishing the Quay, or or would it be an addition? No, I think there is no way we stop shipping to Docker Hub, unless CDF says that uh, Docker Hub isn't compliant with CDF rules, and then uh, we, we may need to do so. But since Kubernetes and other things have been distributed from Docker Hub, I don't think that is something we should expect. So, what what would be the benefit of using Quay then? Uh, so one of so firstly, it's another delivery platform. 
which is used by some companies. So again, if you use UBI, combining this with query, it can help with delivery. And another thing that it, uh, it can enforce these contract restrictions. Mm. Whether, whether it's uh, better or worse, uh, but yeah, it can enforce that if there is a decision to have some enforcements. But it, I mean, if they're still available on Docker, it, is the mm. rest restrictions on Quay really don't matter, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm. Yeah. So I do have opinions uh, about US restrictions, but I still need to get my visa. So <laughs> yeah, I suggest not to dig, dive into this topic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, regarding uh, this, so yeah, let's see where it comes and goes. Uh, but yeah, maybe there will be some updates. Uh, another related story, yeah, it's our multi-platform images. So basically, uh, I wanted to ask Mark and maybe Baptiste about uh, this pull request. Just a second. Uh, so I guess this one. So this is uh, for, <clears throat> so long story short, um, there is an idea to have uh, multi-platform images, including platform like IBM uh, and other things. Docker Hub supports that. Uh, we have tooling which is integrated. Uh, our next steps uh, was to enable deployment of experimental branches to Jenkins for a while. So this is our uh, GitHub organization. Uh, but yeah, finally, it looks like we, uh, oh, yeah, it looks like uh, there are some action items. So um, that the fix from master was merged in. So now it's just failing like the, the normal master is failing with the resource access denied. I was looking around online and found some people who said you need to call Docker login before doing a push. Um, but I, I don't know. Java 11 only. <clears throat> yeah, that's new. <laughs> it was getting past that and failing at the publish stage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's probably out of memory or whatever. Yeah, who knows? But yeah, thanks a lot uh, for looking on that because yeah, I just wanted to ask what are our next steps and yeah, I opened this pull request and it looks like we already have next steps. So, so I, yeah. I do have I do have a PR um, in to try doing the Docker login, but since it's a PR, it's not going to try to do the publish. So I don't know if um, if that's something you want to try in that PR or not, well, since you have trusted merge, access. If we merge it, uh, what would be so it's the one. second one, yeah. Oh, try login prior to push. Okay, so in the worst case, we break what? We break publish experimental, right? Uh, we, yeah, yep. The publish experimental doesn't really work right now. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. And we can always revert it if it doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it fails because of the same issue, I guess. No. Okay, basically it's the same issue, but for other images. At least we know that it's not related to Java alone. I need to reconfigure my browser because uh, there is a zoom panel and when I have this zoom panel, I cannot navigate between tabs. Okay. So where was I? Okay, so nice to be an administrator. Okay, so you will need to merge with uh, the master again, right? That's correct, yeah. Do you have access to this branch? I don't have access to anything on the Docker repo. Okay, let's try fixing that. I believe I can uh, give you push permissions for a particular branch. Branches, uh, master. 
Mm, it's because uh, yeah, you still need to be a collaborator right, in this repository. Right. Okay, I'll figure it out uh, after the meeting then. Okay. Okay, so just uh, to save time. But yeah, thanks a lot for stepping up because yeah, it was so one of the foundation projects uh, for this special interest group and yeah, nobody expected it to stay around for one year. It would be great if you finally get it over the line. I, I want to run Jenkins on my ARM server, so that's why. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't have ARM server anymore. Yep, yeah. that's great. So thanks a lot for helping. Excellent, thanks Oleg. Next topic was Natasha on the plugin installation manager. I think Oleg, you need or are you had you finished Oleg? Excuse my disrupting. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I was uh, looking for a stop chain button. That's why I was so concentrated. <laughs> Natasha, would you like to take over? Yeah, sure. Um, okay. So. Okay, so I put together just like a short presentation and then I'll actually do a demo. So um, you guys can see my screen, correct? Yes. Okay. Let's see. Okay, um, so yeah, my uh, project for uh, Jenkins Google Summer of Code was the plugin installation manager library and um, CLI. And so um, kind of the motivation behind this um, was to offer users better control of which um, versions of plugins they install, um, be able to um, download plugins before Jenkins even starts. And then um, there's been a bunch of different um, uh, implementations um, of plugin management across Jenkins. So the goal of this is to um, unify those and hopefully just use um, the one library. Um, so uh, for the first part of this, um, I've been working on um, converting the existing install plugins bash script um, from Docker um, from the Jenkins Docker um, to Java. And so the reasons for this are just because of the limitations of Bash. It's difficult to maintain and extend. And then um, it doesn't get all of the current up-to-date update center metadata. Um, so there's kind of two parts to my project. There's the CLI part and um, the library. So uh, this is kind of what I've implemented so far for um, CLI options. So you can pass in a list of uh, plugins that you want to install or, and or a path to a text file that actually contains um, the plugins and their versions. Um, you can specify where you want them installed, which Jenkins WAR file you want to use. And then um, this is kind of in the works, but um, one of the features that we want to implement is being able to view all of the security warnings um, for plugins. So that's not quite there yet, but you have the ability to um, see all security warnings and then hopefully we'll get to the point where you can just see the ones for um, the plugins and the dependencies um, that you want to actually install. Um, so kind of the way this works is uh, we find uh, the existing installed plugins either in the war file or in the directory that you um, specified, um, the tool will go ahead and download the requested plugins and ignore them if they're already installed or upgrade them if um, the existing version is too low. Um, there's the ability to um, specify uh, which update center. Um, so I think actually right now this is, uh, hard coded, but um, the goal would be to also uh, do what's currently done in Docker where you get this from the environment variables. 
Um, and then you, there's the option to download from the latest or the experimental. Um, and then after uh, figuring out like where you're going to download your plugin uh, from and uh, what those dependencies are, uh, you'll go ahead and download that and um, the dependencies as well. Okay, so that's just like a quick overview. Um, and so uh, I have this repository. I would love feedback um, maybe after the call or when you guys get a chance. Um, okay, so let's see. I need to just switch applications. Um, so I'll go ahead and do a demo now. Um, okay, so um, you guys can now see my terminal, correct? Okay, um, so uh, I just created a plugins.txt file, which has oh no, uh, which has uh, all the plugins and um, the versions that I want to install. So if you don't specify a version, it'll um, download the latest one, and then you can also use um, some of the the modifiers like latest or experimental and then I also um, threw in a plugin that is not a real plugin um, so that should actually work um, and then we'll go ahead and run this um, and then I'll pass in uh, the war file that I had as well and then we'll pass in some additional plugins um, so, say, oh, did that not, oh, that's weird, um, okay, so, okay, so, sorry, I, I think it should have defaulted to, uh, the list of plugins that I had entered, but, um, let me see. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, actually it did. So, yeah, I didn't actually specify uh, as, uh, somewhere else. So, the default is just um, to do it in the, uh, to check, like, the same directory that you're in. Um, yep, so you can kind of see uh, right now the war file that I have uh, has some existing um, plugins, um, and then there's nothing, no plugins, like, currently installed. Um, it'll look at each of the plugins that uh, I specified and um, we'll download all of the um, dependencies um, and so at, uh, after that you should see uh, basically all of your plugins installed in a folder and then uh, information about like the failed uh, plugin as well um, so yeah that's pretty much what I have so far um, let me know if you have questions or feedback uh, would definitely love to get input. Nice work, Natasha. I noticed that it may not be resolving recursively the dependencies of the things that were downloaded. So for instance, there's a plugin in your list of downloaded git.jpi, which has a mandatory dependency on git-client.jpi. So you may want to investigate a little further to see if you need to recurse on things that you that you downloaded to also get all their dependencies. Okay. Um, yeah. Nice I'll... work. This is excellent. Great work. I, I was just needing this a day ago, so I am intensely interested in what you're doing. Okay. Um, yeah, so we definitely love your feedback. So um, I'll check out the current issue, and then I think we're hoping to release like an alpha version soon, um, just to you know continue to get feedback and start getting people to use it. So. Uh, you can be an early adopter if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. And once uh, the tool is stable enough, we can consider integrating it uh, to Docker images. Because yeah, basically the idea of the first phase is to have something uh, similar to how Docker operates. I mean, install plugins txt. Uh, there will be some edit features already. And yeah, then we will probably consider adding it to other uh, tools because we have a lot of implementations for plugin management in Jenkins. Right. Excellent. Thank you very much, Natasha. Great work. Next topic is YAML configuration support in the Windows Service Wrapper. 
maybe we should ask questions. Uh, let others ask questions. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yes. Are there other questions for Natasha? Excuse my being a little little bit pushed forward here. Okay, looks not. Yeah, if there's none right away, uh, we have our Getter channel, so people can feel free to um, post in there, ask questions in there, um, yeah, give feedback. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. And yeah, we also have a uh, component in Jira, so if you try it out and uh, discover something, please report issues. Thank you, Natasha. Great. So I think our next topic then is YAML configuration support in the Windows Service Wrapper. And Alexander Grigorev, I believe you're here, and you and you and Oleg. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, for for this time, which I made, I uh, able to organize paperwork and uh, apply it to my university, and uh, just. Had a quick conversation with Alex Earl about uh, it's the next question about uh, this uh, Windows installer implementation. So I think uh, we should sync up with, with him and uh, uh, implement uh, my idea to use uh, Windows commands uh, uh, like SC create create services for. Uh, Agent. That's that, that's the idea. That was the general idea which I uh, made in my proposal. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I need to understand uh, the uh, how how can I what how and can, how and can I build it and implement it. That's why I will uh, sync up with Alex. Yeah, he gave me basic information, and soon I will follow up with additional questions. Yes, that's it for now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Oleg, were there were there other topics there? I'm I'm not familiar with the Windows Server wrap, Service Wrapper in YAML topic. Uh, anything else that we need to discuss here in this session? Not at the moment. So yeah, the tool itself uh, works well. It's somehow uh, related to our Windows support policy because yeah, one of the reasons why I brought up this uh, question because yeah, I maintain uh, two Windows components, Windows Service uh, Wrapper and uh, Windows Process Management Library. So one depends on uh, .NET uh, and now it targets .NET 2.0, which is uh, quite old, but uh, old, but uh, on the other hand, it's pretty useful for some people who still use Windows XP, etc. So I think about updating to UI.NET versions because it would, could help us a lot with various stories. But, uh, but at the same time, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what would the Jenkins users say about that. And yeah, I have exactly a similar issue with Windows Process Management Library because it uses Win API. And yeah, currently we target Win API for SP3, but again there is interest to maybe bump uh, to Windows 7, whatever APIs. So yeah, these uh, two topics are my main drivers um, for my job. And I hope I will get to that. And yeah, in addition to that, yeah, I hope to spend some time on Windows Service Wrapper as a project. But yeah, so far, yeah, I was doing a lot of things. Uh, uh, in other areas, so I haven't got to it yet. Uh, Alec, I think maybe I could help with uh, some some of the things uh, with testing. Uh, as far as I, you should maybe you should just break down this in in meeting notes, and uh, uh, I could use some virtual machines and implement some testing. Uh, testing for what for Windows Service Wrapper? Yes, as far is it because it, we need to check uh, and sync up with uh, mm -hmm. modern Windows systems. Yeah. yeah, right. So basically, the current situation is that I tested only on modern Windows systems. Uh -huh. so currently, both WinP and WinSV have a auto test automation on a pair, 
because Appear uh, offers uh, much better Windows ecosystem better than CI Jenkins IO. Uh, and yeah, I use, uh, I run tests on, uh, yeah, maybe I should just share the screen. Okay. If it's interesting to anybody, I will uh, just show it. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, sure uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so both WinP and WinSV are based uh, in uh, Kiki's uh, repository. So yeah, it's a pure .NET project. Yeah, it's been published to Nougat at the moment. It has insane number of installations. Uh, it has well, more stars than Jenkins X. Uh, because it uh, has been widely used in many projects. Um, but yeah, regarding CI flow, so how we do test automation here, so firstly, there are some uh, uh, tests uh, in a WinSV test. So basically, it's uh, unit tests mostly. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you're familiar with uh, JUnit, you won't be shocked because yeah, it's just any unit, which is basically JUnit, but for .NET. So there is a bunch of tests here written in such form, but yeah, uh -huh. none of these tests really checks whether a service has been installed, etc. So we don't really have integration tests for Windows Service Management, and maybe it's one of the topics which might be interesting to you because yeah, personally I have no idea how to properly do that because yeah, my understanding is that whatever you test for Windows Service, you need a clean a Windows virtual machine or container, uh, which you need, then you need to tear it down. So it's not something uh, which I have at the moment in this test suite, uh, but yeah, it's something we could do. Um, and basically regarding uh, CICD pipelines, yeah, this repository has a full release automation, which happens on our peer is the deployments to Nougat uh, and to GitHub releases. And yeah, regarding the CI build itself, yeah, again, it's uh, in Appear, so you can see the Appear YAML definition. So here we basically built on whatever latest uh, Windows server. So right now it's Windows Server 2012, I believe, for Appear. Uh, we take any CPU, so basically whatever matching CPU Appear provides us. Yeah, we can use configuration matrices, but it's not configured here at the moment. And here we use Visual Studio 2013, so that um, it's a target the Visual Studio for the current branch, so it's uh, fully compatible with newer versions, actually. And uh, yeah, here you can see that there is some magic because we need to complete code signing, we need uh, uh, to inject assembly info. So in Jenkins, uh, there is assembly info uh, patcher plugin or something like that which allows uh, to modify assembly information in Jenkins pipelines. Appear just does it uh, natively. And then, yeah, there is some uh, build, which packages everything with Nougat after that. And then it runs this uh, using curve. We just produce the DLL with any unit. And after that, uh, yeah, you get all artifacts published. So as an outcome of this pipeline, you just get uh, second. It's a bit slow for me. Uh, so yeah, you get a uh, person. Yeah, um, yeah, and you also have te artifacts published. Uh, you have test reports uh, for tests included into the package. And uh, if you want, you can uh, manage deployments from this interface again and just uh, not signed off, it's not signed in, so you can see promotion, but actually you can manually trigger promotion, uh, like promoted builds plugin in Jenkins. Um, um, so yeah, uh, it's available for Appear. For Jenkins, uh, yeah, yeah, we don't have similar functionality, but for Jenkins now there is a Google Summer of Code project for supporting a pipeline in promoted builds plugin. So one of our students, Prastik, is working on that. So hopefully we'll have some updates um, next week at the demos. Okay, so yeah, this is what we have right now. And yeah, there is no integration test. And yeah, if you're interested, it could be one area to explore or another area, just see wh whether you could uh, improve test suites. Because yeah, obviously, uh, none of okay. test automation is ideal. Uh, maybe yeah. it's real light guys who have 100% uh, coverage, but definitely not this repository. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Uh, okay. I, I hope we record uh, this uh, session in order for me to repeat it and uh, then follow up with questions, okay?
Yeah, yeah this session is recorded, so yeah, you will get uh, all this information. Okay, great, great. Okay, any questions? None from me. Thanks very much, Oleg. Thanks for the overview. Yeah, thank you. And so our next topic mm -hmm. is... Oh, next topic is Windows installer status. Alex Earl. So we're going from one Alex to another Alex. <laughs> so I, I kind of gave the update on the trusted CI Windows agent already. Um, so I won't go over that again. Um, so I've had a few discussions with um, Daniel Beck about some security stuff um, to try and add to the Windows installer. Um, for one, we automatically currently add a firewall exception um, and it's and it's to a Java process, not to a like a specific port or anything like that. So that could raise some security concerns. So his request is that we turn that into an uh, optional feature to install. Um, so I've added that into the or into the installer so that the the user can select um, to install a firewall exception, and it will warn them and say this is not recommended um, practice. Um, generally, a firewall won't be needed unless you're going outside of your network anyway. So um, this was. Um, something I added. Um, another thing I added is, um, uh, so the installer allows you to select a user to run the um, service as, and um, currently it's kind of, it was selecting the local system account as default, which is actually um, also possible open to security issues. So um, now it mentions that that is not recommended uh, to run as the local system account, and it um, specifies the um, the entry area to add in a username and password as the recommended method. Um, so I, really it's, um, it, it, I just need to get testing, but I feel like um, I need to get builds on that are um, tr from either ci.jenkins.io or trusted before asking people to try installing it. Um, just because I wouldn't want to install something that some random person on the internet built. <laughs> so so that, that, that's a concern there. So, um, but really it just needs a lot of testing. Um, I've started looking at a way of unit testing the installer. Um, there's not really anything out there right now. So I'm, um, and it's just kind of for basic stuff. I want to make sure that, you know, going back and forth between the pages and the installer works correctly. The fields are set correctly. Um, that you can override things via the command line um, as um, as a lot of people do for deployments to multiple machines. That's not necessarily something that will probably be done with Jenkins, but it'll be useful with the Chocolatey package um, because Chocolatey, you um, call the MSI with um, the command line parameters to set up what you want. So um, that's how you expose those parameters to a user of a Chocolatey package. So I have, a, I have a Jenkins file um, in my current repo that will build the installer, the MSI installer, and then it will um, package up the Chocolatey package based on that installer. Um, so um, yeah, but that's all stuff we need to figure out for getting it on the infrastructure for publishing and so forth. So once we have builds on either trusted or, or ci.jenkins.io, it'll, um, it'll help a lot. Uh, one question um, about um, warnings for system administrator. Uh, have you considered uh, having uh, administrative monitors and Jenkins for that? Um, I have not, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's probably a quite separate story, but yeah, maybe once uh, these features are integrated, maybe we should uh, make even one step forward and to warn Jenkins users from Jenkins Web UI about mm. that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Though I'm not sure how to properly resolve it, but yeah, uh, we could probably do that. Okay. So I think some good progress has been made with the builds and stuff. So, um, uh, you know, I started this a while ago, so I'd, I'd like people to start testing at some point, but I really, like I said, I want, I want it to get builds from an official quote unquote official source before asking people to test it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all for me on that topic. Thanks very much, Alex. Excellent, that's great results. Um, Oleg, you and Ab Abudaya, 
I had a topic on status update for the performance test framework. I don't see yeah. Abu here. Do you want to take a brief summary of it? It looks like there's great, great news to be shared. Yeah, I can share that. So do you see my screen again? Do, yes. Yeah, it happens too often today. Okay, so now what a great news. So yeah, the last uh, platform seat meeting, uh, we did, did a demo of uh, how performance testing framework would be operating. So if you scroll down, yeah, there are some notes about that. Uh, but basically what was our plan is to finish the integration and to make it a part of the default test suites. And this is what we actually uh, completed. So for example, if you go to Jenkins uh, test harness, you can uh, see, yeah, one, actually there is a parallel work about having a release drafter and the release automation enabled for the repositories. So if you're interested, uh, I can talk about uh, it in the future. So, yeah, there is a mailing list thread about that. And here you can see that in 2.50, we integrated the uh, plugin benchmarking. Uh, there was one uh, enhancement um, in the 2.51 in order to reduce number of dependencies, because uh, yeah, it was using reflection. But basically any Jenkins plugin user now just uh, can just go and read the, the documentation how to use that. Um, so yeah, uh, there are some examples and links. And yeah, it's released. Same, it's already available uh, within a uh, plugin POM. Um, so here, last uh, plugin POM release, uh, which we had uh, uh, last week, I guess, yeah, it also supports uh, running benchmarks. So basically, as a plugin developer, what you need to do now, if you use the uh, latest plugin POM, you define minus the benchmark uh, profile. Oh, yeah, it should be a minus P, might be maybe but yeah uh, it's something i will check but yeah basically if you do that uh, yeah, you get uh, the benchmark crying uh, and the all benchmarks configured in your repository uh, will be operational and uh, it's also integrated into ci jenkins io uh, so yeah. we did edit a step for pipeline library so last uh, Two weeks ago, we had a discussion with Olivier Vernini about how to properly integrate it uh, into the repositories. And yeah, here I'm not sure whether it's linked in this pretty long list. Yeah, now we have a method uh, for um, um, a pipeline library which does run benchmarks for you. Um, it includes uh, some steps inside uh, which uh, automate uh, the things. Uh, so, yeah, VARS. Uh, uh, run benchmarks. So basically, it's just a pipeline sample which does it. So what happens here? It uh, runs uh, the benchmarks on high mem uh, machines. So one machines which uh, are almost physical ones. You may see that we use uh, local resources plugin. So we ensure that we do not uh, bring down the entire instance and the resource capacity because these machines are also used uh, for certain test harness, for example in Jenkins core, so we don't want uh, to cause doses. And then, yeah, there is just report publishing happens. So if you're interested to see it in action, there is a role strategy plugin. So role strategy plugin already has it integrated into a Jenkins file. It has a lot of uh, benchmarks uh, in the repository. SRC test uh, um, performance, I guess. Uh, no. Just uh, Java. So performance is our uh, configuration as code instance for this. But yeah, now there are some benchmarks here. For example, there is a number of benchmarks which we already use. Uh, for example, benchmarks for folder access. Here we pre-configure the instance and then uh, yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of code because we need uh, to create a big instance to run proper benchmark for resolution. But yeah, basically the tests are something like that. So we just, uh, so we have a TLS storage which enables security and then we just uh, test one method uh, and all the underlying implementation is telling the expression checks and other things happens here. So this is the benchmark. And uh, there is a lot of examples here. And yeah, we are not uh, doing it just for fun because yeah, so our beauty is going, um, 
uh, ahead the schedule. So we are basically on the phase two of Google Summer of Code, and phase two is about uh, performance improvements for all strategy plugin. And that is one of first uh, changes, which is all, also backed by existing benchmarks. And here you can see a report generated by uh, GMH, which shows that, for example, uh, well, 3,000 percent for one benchmark because yeah, we rely on caching and we have something like 150, 182 for other benchmarks in the list. So we have pretty good bump. Uh, yeah, there are some unknown degradation things, but yeah, it's well, we still running on virtualized environments, so plus minus 10 percent. Yeah, it's not something uh, we care much about. But yeah, this is an example of this framework uh, in use. Uh, all components are integrated. There are some pending release for configuration as code plugin support uh, because yeah, we moved some framework bits for JCASC support uh, to JCASC plugin. So there is a topic on me to have uh, um, a new JCASC test harness uh, before, uh, library so we, that we can release that. Uh, but yeah, basically the functionality is already there. It's already integrated into the master branch. Yeah, I can show. So we still have some time on this. So yeah, or no, we don't. We well, actually the, the, we've hit the end of our time. But if you've got topics, I am fascinated by this Oleg because, for instance, I need to assess the performance impact of a transition from J Git four five to five four. <laughs> And so you have me now very interested, very, very intensely interested. So, yeah, so you can just uh, start using it. Everything is in place. So here, for example, there is an example of Cask benchmark. So Cask benchmark is much more simple than the previous example I've shown because yeah, basically all the magic uh, happens uh, inside uh, different classes. And yeah, so oh, it's, it's a framework uh, bit. But uh, what we can do, we can reconfigure the instance from YAML file. Uh, YAML, uh, so yeah, performance Jenkins. Uh, yeah, so I guess it's a sample task. So here's, for example, YAML file where we preconfigure our strategy. So this is a configuration for ownership based security. So this is an engine which uses ownership plugin, I guess. Oh no, it's not. It's just a common sample. And yeah, after that, uh, yeah, we get some agents, etc. and we can uh, run benchmarks that save a lot of time on pre-configuration of the instances. And yeah, it's uh, something we could use for the cases as well. So you don't uh, need to know Java in order to pre-configure the entire instance in Java. Instead of that, you use JCASC plugin for the benchmark. Excellent. Okay. So yeah, everything uh, is either ready or waiting for the release. So there is a staged blog post. Basically, it was ready yesterday, so the ball is on me because I need to deliver one patch to JCASC plugin so that we get it released. But yeah, the functionality there, so if somebody wants to try it out, just do that, and the role strategy plugin uh, could be a good example for that. Thank you. That's great. So I, Alexander, just like you, I will be reviewing the video of this afterwards to be sure I catch up on all the things that Oleg just showed. Thanks very much. That's excellent. We have reached the end of our time. I believe we've covered our topics. I've proposed a future topic as release drafter. Oleg, I would likely put you on that topic as the most experienced. Uh, would you be willing to, to have that as a future topic? Yeah, well, uh, I'm perfectly fine to do that. So yeah, I'm uh, finalizing some things. For release drafter, but yeah, if you oh, basically I can share my screen again. So if you have a couple of minutes, uh, yeah. So Jenkins uh, CI Dev. So on Jenkins CI Dev, you can find uh, two. Yeah. So yeah, there is introducing a global robot configuration for release drafter and whatever. So basically, this thread uh, started in May, and now it's close to completion. Uh, so we have some documentation pending for release drafted, but how it uh, looks like. So we can take a repository, let's say, configuration as code plugin. So since we talk about that today a bit, so here you can see that uh, there is uh, some uh, history of releases. Actually, here's a staging release, staged release, so it's a draft which includes uh, the patch I was talking about, which we need to fully release in the blog post. And uh, basically this uh, change log is 
automatically generated based on uh, pull requests and on labels. So you may see that there is some categorization here and it comes just for, from labels and from pull request titles. And there are some things like, for example, auto, automatic resolution of uh, uh, Jira references. So in a uh, change log, it goes as a hyperlink. And yeah, we, here we get such configurations um, generated. Regarding the configuration itself, so we spent some time in order to have uh, a solution uh, mm -hmm. uh, powered by a ProBot and a global configuration. Mm -hmm. So basically now we have repository in Jenkins, which does uh, mm -hmm. includes a lot of uh, configurations. And if you open release draft settings, they look like that. Because all is generalized um, and it's stored in a GitHub repository. So it's GitHub. Uh, the job. I'm not sure what's the link. So yeah, there is Jenkins.github which stores some shared functionality. For example, Daniel has added security, code of conduct there. So now all the repositories have the same policy references uh, uh, from uh, GitHub metadata. And when you submit a new pull request, you actually get this code of conduct uh, suggested. So it's automated by this repository. And here, here we also have .github uh, release draft YAML. So yeah, it looks a bit clunky, but yeah, basically this is a configuration uh, we have. So yeah, there are replacers, so there is template which we generate, there are some label uh, matching policies. So yeah, if you want, you can skip change log, or there are automated things which will be a bit uh, refactored later once we get new release of release drafter. Yeah, this is an application we use. And yep, yeah, it just works. And uh, right now we have uh, 23 repositories in Jenkins uh, which use uh, release drafter and counting. So we updated almost all uh, development uh, tools because yeah, I was doing a series of releases and to save uh, time, I just uh, enabled the release uh, drafter there right away. So you can see there. So these change logs have been tweaked a bit because yeah, change uh, release drafter doesn't uh, generate such links at the moment. Uh, so yeah, there are some areas uh, for improvements, but yeah, basically it, uh, it generates a draft for you, which you can use. Okay, questions. So, so the cr crucial piece is I enabled it on one of the plugins I maintain. It's proposing drafts, and then I choose when to publish it. Is that right? It's not automatically published. Exactly. So uh, yeah, there is um, documentation under works. Uh, well, Somewhat. So, yeah, the comment release after usage. So, what's going on? Here's a browse link for that. So, yeah, here you can see that uh, there are some guidelines how to use it, how to release with it, but basically, you just integrate the pull requests, you mark a uh, label pull requests if you want. And then when you're ready, you do standard release flow using Previn release plugin or whatever, depending on your tool chain. And then you just go, uh, I didn't add, add, edit the, the link here, I'll fix that. But you, you go to the link uh, and edit the release on your own. So you uh, prepare final release and then you get it out of the door. So release drafter just prepares the draft for you. Excellent, thank you. And my experience was, quite positive, even as inexperienced as I am with it. So that, that was a great a great first experience with Platform Labeler, the vitally crucial plugin installed by maybe 200 installation. So that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, no dash. Oh, well, uh, there are so many typos, so I will be fixing it by the end of the meeting, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that's a plugin. So it's right. also known as a much like this plugin uh, test uh, plugin or something like that. That that is that is I don't know why you would say such a thing, but you're absolutely right. That is my it is my sandbox. Thanks everybody. Let's close the meeting. Thank you very very much. We will meet again in two weeks. All right. Thanks. Yeah, thanks everybody. And copy uh, an archived copy of video of the video will be posted into the meeting notes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Bye. Bye.